Hey, welcome back to Ground Zero Salem. As always, I'm your host, Pat. How's it going, everyone? Happy Monday. Uh, it's 87 degrees out. I just jumped on the trampoline with the kid for a while. I'm starting to cool off a little bit. Again, regretting the fact that I have such luscious, long, gorgeous hair. Um, listening to Amon, not the uh, pre DSI band, but a band from Eastern Europe. Cool, kind of thrashy, cryptic sounding black metal, uh, first wave sounding black metal stuff. I'm trying to remember if they're from the Czech Republic or Slovakia. One of those places. It's a split release put out by Atomic Vision and Life Eternal Productions. Atomic Vision, I believe I talked about before, put out a lot of cool stuff from this part of the world. Um, just has that certain creeping weirdness. And there's something about the vocal execution with bands from this part of the world. Uh, musically, it doesn't really resemble Master's Hammer, but there's something in the vocal style that feels very Eastern European to me. At any rate, this is a, a cool release, a nice DIY tape. Um, recommend checking it out. I'll put a link I think it's still kicking in distros. Give it a look. Give it a listen. But I decided to do an update about another part of the world. It puts out a lot of raw goodness that I've been semi-obsessed over the past six months or so. I've always liked South American death and black metal and thrash metal, um, as I'll talk about. But I've been digging into a little bit more obscure stuff. I, I've been well-versed in you know, your vol Volcanos and your sarcophagos, and of course, Sepultura, I've been a fan since I was very young. Uh, all that kind of stuff, all the Cogmello stuff. I'm going to talk about some of that. Um, but when it kind of developed into more of a black metal scene in the 90s, it still had its distinct national identity, but you could tell maybe there was some influence starting to creep in from all the stuff that happened in Norway a little bit. Uh, I've been kind of reading about that checking out some of their black metal bands from the 90s. It still sound distinctly Brazilian to me. I've also got a bunch of stuff from Peru, just because the distros I was ordering from had some Peruvian stuff that sounded interesting to me. Um, kind of spurned on uh, by a couple of different things, inspired by a few different incidences. The High Defamation update that Eric did a while back, uh, talking about the zombie don zine and what he was inspired to check out through that, gave me a few pointers. And also this United Forces ugh, tome, this gigantic phone book of a zine anthology, Omnibus, of the United Forces zine that came out from 86 to 91, put out by Bazillion Points. I can't recommend this enough. It's awesome. You can even get swole, like, doing curls with it. Um, this guy, Marcelo Batista, did this during those times, and this is a fine collection. It's nice because it's in the original Portuguese, of course, but a lot of it is reproduced. I mean, a good portion of the zines are reproduced in English, so you can read the interviews with a lot of the notable bands as well as some of the reviews and everything. And it just uh, is a great document of how diverse and interesting Brazil was at the time. He touches upon some international stuff, you know, all the types of bands that the international zines were covering then. Very much in a way, this is like the, the Slayer mag of Brazil. Um, so he's covering other bands from Europe and whatnot, but focusing on his, his local scene quite a bit. And you get to see the development of bands like bands like Atomic Possessor and Sepultura, even RDP. He covers a lot of the hardcore bands in here, like uh, Ojo Seco. All this kind of like culminating into really extreme, brutal death and black metal by the end of the decade. Um, he kind of goes on to be more into the whole grindcore thing. He formed the legendary grind band Rot who have a bunch of releases out um, and kind of went more in that direction and away from the more satanic metal stuff by the end of uh, his stint with this zine. But it's still interesting seeing the documentation of everything leading up to that. It's very, very cool, especially just reading of like economic unrest and civil unrest. So I should say economic uncertainty and civil unrest going on in Brazil at the time, influencing the music scene. I mean, a lot of these bands did not have the money or the means to have really pretty pristine recordings. A lot of the stuff that you're going to unearth is recorded on boom boxes, and some of it sounds amazing to me. You do develop kind of a a taste and, and a certain ear for listening to stuff that's that raw. I think that's also very common with the, the Eastern European metal that you'll dig up and stuff that came from Russia and places like that. It has a certain crackling dirty intensity to it um, that a lot of bands from 
you know, Western Europe and uh, the United States don't have. So <coughs> I started picking up a bunch of stuff. Um, we'll talk about Brazil first and then cover the Peruvian bands. But this is all stuff. There's a few things I dug out that I've had actually for a while that I wanted to include in the discussion. A lot of these are recent, you know, past six months kind of purchases. Stuff that I've been spinning. Uh, I got this Genesidio a little while ago. The Grave, which is their mini LP. That's on side A and side B is some live and demo stuff. Um, great Sao Paulo, brutal, bestial metal you know you could call it death or black it's got deeper vocals more growling kind of vocals <clears throat> sort of a, a wild fast hardcore punk intensity to it it's raw but you can tell they are pretty good at playing their instruments um great gatefold there cool picture of the band like a lot of nuclear war now releases this includes a cool booklet that has some history of the band tons of great flyers stuff like that and the live songs the demo songs I could take or leave they're very very raw you know when you're in the mood for it it works pretty well the live songs actually sound better the demo songs are pretty thin sounding but if you're in the mood for like raw feral intensity you can't go wrong with really any demo stuff from bands from that area they're from Sao Paulo uh, Insulter is from Belo Horizonte um Minus Garris, which I guess the, those were the two major scenes from what I could gather reading about it. They seemed kind of separate, apparently. Although I did, since I'm absolutely garbage with any kind of um, geography, uh, especially in countries that aren't my own, uh, I thought they were like on the other side of the, the continent from each other. And they're actually right down the coastline. So I don't know if it was just travel was just really difficult at the time with buses. I seem to remember the author of the, the zine there, um, Mr. Batista having to take a bus rides for a really long time to get from one location to the other. At any rate, Insulter's really cool. Um, I always read about this band, like on the Nuclear War Now board, and I always thought, I always kind of related them to something a lot more brutal, like a, a Necrofago kind of band, Necrofago kind of band, where it was like um, almost approaching like a, a black grindcore sort of thing, which was definitely a, a thing in Minus Garris from what I read. Uh, and their first handful of tracks on here are like that, on the uh, Last Illusion demo from 87. Um, but the Ignoring the Falsity demo, which is uh, 89, it goes more in almost kind of a Black Thrash direction. What's interesting is they had two distinct phases, Era 1 and Era 2, Black Metal, and thrash metal phase. Apparently they just decided to abandon all the corpse paint and bullets to just look like street rockers. Um, but musically it's all pretty black metal-ish thrash of varying intensities across all three of the demos. And then uh, the side B is all live stuff, but it's a pretty good sounding live set. And that's from, uh, sorry, it's rehearsals, still live, uh, from 1988. So it's kind of dead in the center. They, they get a little bit more refined over the years, you know, a little bit more of like, uh, almost like a Teutonic, evil Teutonic kind of sound, but rough around the edges. And then finally on vinyl, we've got the Invoker LP, the Dark Arts. This is a compilation of demos. I do not know who put this out. It wasn't Nuclear War now. Ah, I'll put a caption. But this is extremely raw black metal. Um, sounds like a, a really cranked up practice amp. Like a, like a PV combo amp, like a small one, just put as close to the microphone as possible and turned up really loud and it's awesome. It, it sounds like a swarm of bees. <laughs> the, the guitar tone got really creepy, uh, just wretched sounding black metal style vocals and it is fast. It's off the rails, um, kind of thrashing, blasting, fast parts, but very, uh, very hypnotic. Um, do me almost slow passages that are really, really entrancing and really creepy. Very, very cool release. This compiles, uh, let's see, Church of Devil's Worship demo, uh, the Dark Axe demo, and a rehearsal. So this is straight up black metal, and I feel like it's kind of branching out from what maybe what you'd expect from 
stuff from South America. Like it's it doesn't necessarily sound Scandinavian or anything like that, but it it sounds like it could all, almost be in the same level as like the Samael demo or something like that. Then we've got Profane Creation with Nama. This is also kind of doomy black metal stuff. A lot better production though. This is on Triumvirate of Evil. It looks like very uh, mournful. <laughs> kind of melodic stuff going on with it that reminds me of classic doom reminds me of almost like saint vitus a little bit and maybe a little bit of the early peaceville stuff too but with like really wretched black metal like goblin sort of vocals really catchy sorrowful gu guitar work great riffs on it um very very moving kind of uh song structures and songwriting then nefastus torturous ways if you like sepultura you'll like nefastus nefastus you can tell are very very big fans of sepultura it sounds a lot like dead in the middle of Beneath the Remains and Arise with rougher production. I feel like there's probably a handful of bands that were like, yep, we really like Sepultura a lot. <laughs> uh, let's get on that Sepultura train, you know, from Brazil at the time. I think The Mist is another good example, although I believe they had a member of Sepultura in the band, The Mist did, if I'm remembering right. Uh, Nefastus are, are similar, like, you know, the vocals sound like Max. A lot of the riff styles are, are similar, and that's not a bad thing at all. <laughs> They're kind of doing their own thing. They're, like I said, they kind of sound in between those two records. It's firmly out of their like satanic Sepultura era. You know, it's, it's they're not trying to do a bestial devastation kind of thing. It's certainly cribbing notes from the albums that they got a lot of success from. But they do it very well. Um, very, very good record. No hate. Then Lou Cipher, Worship Flesh, and What Is Your Pleasure demo, two-on-one. What is your pleasure? Bonus tracks, a handful of tracks. This is awesome. Um, I, I talked about this on Marty's stream a while back, commenting on how it's spelled like a dude's name, L-O-U-C-Y-F-E-R. So it's like uh, the antagonist from P.D. Wheatstraw, Devil's Son-in-Law, Lou Cipher. Um, regardless of any lost in translation kind of weirdness, this is a uh, pretty, pretty ripping black death metal stuff from Brazil. Early 90s, I want to say it came out in... 91, the full, full length. I've got it written down here. 93 on Cogamello. So got reissued on Cog Cogamello as well. Kind of unnecessary built-in OB strip on the spine there. Could do without that, but whatever. It's a CD. A nice fold out there. Digipack. I don't hate Digipacks. I'm okay with them. Um, anyway, musically, it has its raging moments where they have that. There's a certain type of blast beat too. Kind of like the vocals with Eastern European death and black metal stuff there's a certain thing with south american blasts they sound a little hesitant they're like they're kind of punching above their weight with how fast they can go there's just something very weirdly urgent and hurried about them <laughs> that I, I don't know it's something it seems characteristically South American, and I love that about it. There's a bunch of that kind of blasting on this, and also really pulsing, heavy, slow moments. And underneath it all, they're kind of wearing their influences on their sleeves a lot more than I think a lot of their contemporaries. You can hear a lot of the first wave black metal influence, Venom and Hellhammer and that kind of stuff. There's a little bit more like catchy, almost kind of thrash riffing thrown in there. It's great, it's a really good release. Then in big name in Brazilian stuff, Chacal, The Man Is His Own Jackal, it has the, an EP as a bonus on here as well. Uh, Death is a Lonely Business. Death is a Lonely Business, not really great. It's, uh, to my ears, it's very like groove metal stuff. Um, not a big fan. Kind of slow down, kind of choppy, moshy sort of stuff. Um, like they've been listening to a lot of prong. And I like prong, but I don't want to hear a Brazilian band that used to do feral, snarling, fast stuff try to attempt prong. Um, the Man of Zone Jackal is great, though. It's a lot more... Uh, technically adept and a lot more, um, maybe a little diluted on, in the energy department from their debut, but it's really makes up for that with being like a very structurally sound, good thrash metal record with a Brazilian flair to it. Of course, it's very much firmly Brazilian thrash, 
inspired probably a lot more by Bay Area stuff, but it's it's still got a certain bestial kind of edge to it that is great. Then you've got Strangulation Between Nothing and Eternity. This was a pretty anomalous. I never knew that there was a band from Brazil that approached something like Atheist or Cynic. Um, it has that jazzy weirdness to it, all that off-time stuff with it. It's very technical. Uh, it is firmly death metal, but it is technically adept and jazzy and weird. Uh, you know, firmly death metal style vocals and everything, uh, but rough recording. And one thing about a lot of those bands, especially as time went on with anything quote unquote tech coming out of death metal, uh, is just too overproduced. So this is a perfect sweet spot for me. Um, dizzying technicality, but rough around the edges recording, which I really like. We'll get into some speed and thrash metal here. This Taurus CD is awesome. You know, I'd say speed thrash. I mean, it's such an arbitrary thing, what's speed metal and what's thrash metal. I think one defining factor of quote unquote speed metal uh, is the kind of high-pitched, almost sort of Neil Turbin, like falsetto kind of vocals that come out of this. But yeah, raging, fucking gauntleted fist in the air, head banging, thrashy speed metal. Came out on Austral Holocaust. And actually this came out in 1986. I thought it was a little bit later than that, but this is very firmly mid eighties thrash metal stuff. Great, great piercing vocals. They're not all high pitched like that. He just goes into the turbinisms here and there. Then you've got Anthades. This is a great, this is a great CD. The author of the United Forces zine talked about being buddies with this band pretty often. I think he might have been a founding member, even if I'm remembering right. Uh, no Limite de Forca. Sorry for my terrible pronunciation of all these titles. Get used to it. My my Spanish and Portuguese is non-existent, so have fun with that. But yeah, this is, again, you know, you can tell they listen to Bay Area thrash stuff, probably the German stuff too, and it has a certain intensity and, and rawness that the German stuff, the Teutonic stuff has, but it's also very identifiably Brazilian. And it's just that something to it, the raw recording, the gruffness of the vocals. There's just something about what those bands were going through, probably economically and socially, that created a certain sound. And Antares has the thrash metal version of that. <laughs> And then, what's funny is, I was listening to this a ton, I was like, okay, this is a lot more cleaned up, you know, it's, it's got a little bit of the, that Brazilian intensity, but it's very much like leaning towards something closer to a Bay Area thrash sound. This album, I was like, when did that come out? A couple years later? No. <laughs> it came out in 2015. So, they're very good at, you know, maintaining that sound, maintaining that intensity. Looking at the back now, I'm like, oh yeah, they all look like a bunch of dads now in this one. <laughs> um, all have short hair and stuff, probably working normal ass jobs. Dude's rocking a sweet Star Wars shirt. Um, but again, sorry for my terrible Portuguese. O Caos da Razão. And uh, Mutilation Records was the, was the label that put this out. Yeah, even the artwork, anything involving a checkerboard design that's, and an eyeball, it's just so emblematic of like late 80s, early 90s. They really tricked me with that one. <laughs> and Thares, great stuff. As always, I'm going to try to splice in clips if I can, time allowing. Uh, always rolling the dice with, you know, getting strikes and stuff and having to edit further. So I'll do what I can. Uh, then you've got the Brazilian Behemoth. Uh, this is a combination of a couple of demos. Malignant Temple of Goat. 92 to 93, Malignant Ascension and Satanic Black Temple of Goat. They did the super clever thing of combining the titles. Um, and a lot of tracks on this. Got 92 and 93. Awesome black metal from Brazil. I, I think this might be an example of like the international influences seeping into the token Brazilian sound. There is a lot of that kind of droney hypnotic stuff going on um, with a few of the aforementioned that I'm talking about. I feel like that's definitely a thing with a lot of the Brazilian black metal, these kind of uh, eerie, uh, almost doomy moments, you know? It's like doom without a groove. Like, would, would I dare even call it sludge? I don't know. Uh, but also those, those feral blasts, um, that raw recording, everything that you could want. There's dripping with atmosphere, of course. Killer, killer black metal stuff. Um, I know that Eric talked about a record that was a 12 inch EP that wasn't included on this. And there's there's some recording moments on this where like 
little, little bit of wow and flutter, like the recording drops out. It's definitely raw, but it doesn't detract from anything. I, I think it adds a certain charm. Obviously a cover of Into Crips of Race, very good. Uh, then we got Pentacrostic, The Pain Tears. This is very cool uh, doom death with a touch of black metal. I'd say it's equally inspired by early Samael as it is the uh, the Peaceville stuff and their own homegrown black metal and death metal kind of sound. Um, it's long, long record. It's uh, like 15 songs and it's just haunting, dark, very, very, again, atmosphere laden, dripping with, with evil and dread, kind of black doom metal stuff. I'd say if you like uh, Perverted Ceremony and newer bands like that, um, maybe look look into this a little bit. This isn't as raw as Perverted Ceremony or Moinen of Zezboth either, but I could see where those bands might have been checking out Pentacrossic and it might even be an influence. This is also early 90s. Yeah, this originally came out in 1992 and reissued by Triumvirate of Evil. Then you've got the Almighty Mystifier. I mean, what can you say? I think after Sarcophago and Sepultura, Mystifier might be the most recognizable name from Brazil, arguably. Maybe up there with Vulcano. Chacal, you know, that kind of stuff. Mystifier also were firmly, like, more blatantly weird black metal. I don't think Sarcophago was so early and they had the spikes and the makeup and they were an influence on the Norwegian stuff. Mystifier came along a little bit later, if I'm guessing right. I could be wrong there. Uh, this demo is from 89 originally. I think they got their start a little bit later and I think they embraced, like, fully being black metal a little bit more. It's just my own my own spin. Uh, take it or leave it. These are their demos from the late 80s, early 90s. The Evil Ascension Returns and Tormenting the Holy Trinity. Again, raw, feral stuff. Uh, not too dissimilar from a lot of the stuff I've been talking about. Very uniquely their own band, though. Um, especially with the bands that came later in the 90s, uh, like Behemoth and Evoker. I think that Mystifier were probably a strong influence on those more distinctly black metal bands from Brazil. It's got that loose blasting. It's got the kind of droney, dissonant, you know, uh, dragging kind of creepy parts. Pretty raw, but th whoever was recording it knew how to balance things correctly on the whatever it was, four track, six track, uh, maybe eight track if we're being kind. But yeah, killer black metal, Brazilian black metal. Then you got Cirrhosis Alcoholic Death Noise. Uh, this, I thought, came out way earlier than it did. This came out in the early 2000s. I thought it came out in the 90s at some point. I knew that at one point or another, Cirrhosis was a side band to Sarcophago. Uh, I think Wagner was in the band in the beginning. As far as I know, there aren't any members of um, Sarcophago on this recording, in this lineup. It does sound a lot like Primo Aero sarcophago though the shotgun sounding blasts the weird sounding drums like the feral kind of like overdriven hardcore thrash death metal kind of sounding stuff that they were doing I, I, with a little bit cleaner production if you like inri i would say definitely peep this it's uh it's a it's a fun listen obviously very alcohol themed like a lot of brazilian stuff there's a lot of like oh now it's sexy time drinking drinking satan sex drink <laughs> kind of it's very much almost like tankard like a more like messed up version of tankard or something but brazilian you know and then you got the warfare noise 2 compilation this is kind of in the shadow of the original one um because the original one had so many notable bands on it this has witch hammer mega thrash mayhem and aemon hammer so we got two hammers on there uh witch hammer's kind of evil thrash kind of sounding stuff i'd say it's like not too dissimilar to a lot of the more black metal leaning first wave Teutonic bands, kind of in that vein. Uh, Mega thrash is really almost kind of clean, like American sounding thrash metal, which is okay. You know, kind of like longer compositions and like a lot of like real songwriting kind of taking place. Uh, then the Brazilian mayhem is that's my pick for this. Awesome. Uh, I wish there were more songs by them on here. There's only two. I need to hop onto Discogs and see what else they have. Like if it's just a demo or maybe they have a mini LP as well. I don't, I don't know. But the Brazilian Mayhem sounds like the most out of control parts of very early Slayer, like the Metal Blade era Slayer stuff, but only the really fast moments. None of the, 
you know, building tension kind of moments like Hell Awaits or anything. Just the fast, crazy stuff. Maybe as, as far as uh, Rain and Blood, because that's all a full throttle record. Um, and just the most aggressive elements of, of early thrash metal with just brutal growl vocals over it. And it's it's super mean. It's really good. And then Aim and Hammer, which almost sounds like um, like a Venom Hellhammer kind of clone. Not clone, but it sounds like a Venom Hellhammer sort of hybrid, and uh, but a little bit tighter than either of those bands. It's pretty enjoyable. Okay, so that's all of our Brazilian stuff. So let's cruise on over to Peru. Bye. Now, in honor of our special guest, I've created Dinner Mondu. First, we have French fries. And French dressing and French bread <laughs> and to drink <laughs> ta <Ta-da! laughs> Peru. Um, I was ordering from a distro. I'm trying to remember which one. I ordered from a seller on Discogs uh, from Peru, I believe, from South America. It was one of those deals where it took me forever to get these in the mail, but it was worth the wait. Um, this is on Necronausea. Yeah, I think most of these are on Necronausea. They put out a lot of obscure stuff. I got three CDs by Necronausea Records. That's unearthing stuff that I've certainly never heard of uh, that I really like except for one. And I'll get into that. Uh, this is Azate La Humana... Hum- <laughs> this is Azate a La Humanidad by An Extremis. This is great. It uh, It's really mean, almost like dirty sounding black thrash. And it's just rehearsals. I mean, uh, we're talking eight songs total here, recorded at a practice, and not really too much to say about it. I mean, like early creator, the very first creator record. You know, a lot of South American stuff, but it's got a certain, like, tighter kind of thrash thing going on. Um, more kind of, like, shrieky kind of vocals. It's great. If you like black thrash, if you like it raw, this is uh, this is pretty excellent. Then we've got Engendro Sistema de Muerte. Uh, I don't know if it's intentional, but this sounds more hardcore influence, like crossover, leaning into thrash on the first demo. The vocals sound a lot like Gordo from Rado de Peral. Kind of bellowed sort of yelled hoarse deeper but not not death metal growls and then the second recording on here uh which i think is yeah it's studio i believe um the second recording on here they're they're focused more in a death metal direction uh still got kind of like a a sort of a crossover kind of flair to it but it's a lot faster it's a lot tighter um starting to lean into death metal and the vocals are solidly death metal so very cool and then, I mean, I really wanted to like this, this Ferretro Believer Slaughter, uh, another Peruvian band, the last one of the pile from this label. I mean, it's cool, um, just as a, as a document of a band that was in the scene at the time from that country, but unfortunately, none of these recordings are really up to snuff for me to really enjoy them. They're so poorly recorded. I'm, I can get down with rehearsal recordings and demo recordings, um, and really, really raw stuff, but it's more of like a, it's more of an issue of the levels, you know, like super loud vocals and everything else you can barely hear. Uh, there's a few songs that make it through okay. I can hear what they're doing. It's like very primal, thrashy death metal stuff. It's it's cool. I just, uh, it, it's, it's really hard to enjoy it because it's badly, badly recorded, most of it, unfortunately. Um, and there's, I mean, it says demo on a few of these, I think. Uh, but it's... Uh, yeah, I don't know. It's it all sounds live and it doesn't doesn't sound very good, unfortunately. A uh, few others, and these are the more the big daddies of the scene. I just thought I'd throw them in because it, it fits the topic. Uh, I got a two on one anal vomit uh, CD. Anal vomit's it's kind of funny because it's a certainly a memorable band name, and I talked to a friend of mine from Peru that lived in Boston for years, and he's been back down there for a while now. Um, I think he owns a he owns a skateboard themed bar. But anyway, he's more of a hardcore punk dude. 
but I uh, I mentioned anal vomit when he was up to visit, and he's like, oh yeah, they're like huge in Peru. They're like rock stars. They're like Metallica. I'm like, anal vomit? <laughs> really? Okay. I mean, it, they're called anal vomit. But yeah, I mean, anal vomit are a great mix of um, a certain South American bestial, untethered, feral sort of thing with, to my ears, like a more Teutonic kind of approach. Uh, the vocalist, she does like the schmear destruction screams a lot, which were kind of overdone to my ears the first time I heard them, and then I learned to love it more and more, but those high-pitched notes that uh, Schmear from Destruction would hit, uh, a lot of bands do that nowadays. I feel like it's a thing a lot of people invoke. Anal Vomit does it pretty well, though. And then finally, uh, Hades. This is great. Um, oh yeah, the Anal Vomit, by the way. This came out on uh, Back on Black. Back on Black, releasing a lot of good stuff on CD. I never would have thought... Back in, I don't know, 2008 or 2009, that this label that was repressing a lot of classics and not doing the best job with it would just be putting out, like, kick-ass dual CDs of uh, a lot of hard-to-find stuff, like Anal Vomit, and also, like, uh, Onslaught and Benediction and stuff. Anyways, finally, we got Hades. Hades with a Z at the end. Aquilaire is the name of the record. There's also bonus tracks. There's quite a few songs on this. 17 total. Again, we're dealing with a lot of like very, very doomy, um, almost glacially slow hypnotic moments, especially on the first song, Human Extinction. That first song, it's eight, eight, eight minutes long. It's very engaging, um, very insidious, just sense of doom and gloom kind of swarming over the entire atmosphere of the track. And then it goes into a whole bunch of like the next song is like a, a neck breaking fast two minute rager. So there's a lot of like tempo variation. Uh, I think Lou Cipher is a pretty similar sounding band in a lot of ways. Hades tends to stretch out the, the doomy parts a little bit more. Um, pretty deep uh, demonic kind of vocals on it too. Um, yeah. Awesome. Awesome band. Lots of, lots of really nasty, those, those South American blasts, those crazy hurried blasts when they're going fast, that's what they're utilizing. And it has a great sense of urgency when they're going fast and, uh, breaking into doomy passages. So, all right. Feeling pretty good about that. We got, got this done in about a half an hour. Not, not too shabby. Uh, I'm going to go edit this, uh, up next. I don't know. I have, I brainstormed, uh, my, my last shift. I was sitting there trying to think of like topics and I came up with like 20 things to talk about so I don't know where I'm gonna go next uh, I might go back into some grind stuff I think uh, let me know in the comments I've got a bunch of grind I've got some hardcore stuff I can talk about some punk uh, plenty of metal you know I wanted to kind of talk about maybe metal from the 2000s and 2000 teens because I feel like a lot of stuff has been overlooked in the present present day with the new new uh, old school style new death metal stuff um, so I've been kind of backtracking and, and listening to Funebrarum and Funebrarum, Funebrarum, I've been listening to Funebrarum and, uh, stuff like that, you know, before the, the big death metal explosion got popular again, bands that were still kind of keeping the flame alive. I think that might be a cool topic. I've got a bunch of stuff that falls into that category and, uh, a bunch of punk I could talk about. I'm just going through this big, big old pile of CDs and stuff that I've been listening to the past couple of months. So if any of that sounds good to you, let me know. We got death metal, we got grind, we got hardcore. Give me a shout out in the comments. Let me know. Um, no matter where you are, have a good weekend, weekday, evening, morning, or night. GZS out.